Yo, 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 it's Rooster Grooves. I'm Jesse. That's Jay. This is Rooster Grooves. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Come along, everybody. That was a really high up intro. I'm being sarcastic. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Very high energy. Because <laughs> of the song we just played? Chill? Oh, no. I don't. Yeah, I mean, it uh, just lulled me into a chill state. Also, I'm melting. It's uh, 80 degrees in Seattle, mm -hmm. probably 95 in the studio. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All of the windows closed. Fans are switched off for your audio pleasure. Yeah. We do this yeah. for you guys. Yeah. It's a busy weekend here. In Seattle, it is, yeah. It's Bite of Seattle. Oh, it's that as well. I, I think Capitol Hill Block Party. Yeah. T Swift in it's the house. Taylor Swift. A Mariners game. Mariners Lots playing the Mariners Toronto games. Blue Jays. There you go. A little international baseball. Yeah. So. Crazy. Crazy. Bite yeah. of Seattle. That's Greek food, right? Isn't it? Is that right? Or is it not? I thought it was just wrong? a festival about all kinds of food. Oh. I don't know if it's specific. Interesting. I might have to check that out. But it sounds, yeah. I'm getting yeah. hungry. I haven't yeah, eaten yeah. today yet. Me neither. I had, a, I had a biscuit from the airplane. I just flew in today. So I had a, a Biscoff. Have you ever had those Biscoffs? No. Bis <laughs> like Biscotti? Uh, no. It's like a cookie, but it's like hard, sweet. It's like cinnamony, sugary. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like almost like Biscotti. Yeah. But not as tough. You know, biscotti, you have to More. dip that in coffee, otherwise you're going to mm. crack your teeth open, you know what I mean? Got you, okay. <laughs> nice, that sounds good. Yo, we're yeah. talking about Arc de Soleil. Yes. Hopefully we're pronouncing that right. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's heard of this person, this artist, this band. Very under the radar, mm -hmm. um, which we'll get into. How did you come across them? This was um, uh, a, what do you call it? A Shazam. A Shazam, okay. Heard it in a... Okay coffee place or something okay yeah and i thought it was krong bin i was like is that krong bin right yeah so i shazammed it and it was yeah. not krong bin right yeah and then i even was when researching i was like i gotta be sure if this is krong bin <laughs> and like they're doing a little secret project Side project yeah under a different name yeah but no no alas that's wrong no the artist is daniel kadwatha yeah and yeah, this is super interesting because we're talking about Arc de Soleil. Yeah. But this this is not even close to this guy's like single main project. Yeah, totally. Yeah, this is like one slice and even genre of like many different things he's done mm -hmm. and is doing, which is, which is crazy. Yeah. 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 So he's like the super talented guy. Yeah. He has Arc de Soleil, for example, has mostly a, like a ton of EPs yeah. since like 2018. Yeah. Um, mostly singles and EPs and all the other pseudonyms, pseudonyms that he uses. It, it's, he's gained like a lot of streams, like on Spotify, for example, Yeah. like in the you know, millions. Right. So yeah, like yeah. he has a, a pretty cool fan base, um, but his, his views and his streams are spread around his different projects yeah, yeah. a lot. Should we name drop some of his projects? Or? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, Giant's Nest is probably the next biggest project, right? He has, I think. Uh, um, yeah. And then I think he may also release stuff under Daniel Gunnarsson. Yep. All right. That's what I have. And Daniel Cade. I think it's Cade. K-A-E-D-E. -E. I don't know if I even saw that one. Yeah. I saw that somewhere, but I don't know if I, if I, you know, I didn't come across it musically kind of thing. But Giant's Nest, like, for example, is Lounge house disco -y, electronic arc de soleil is like krung bin <laughs> yeah is the best way to describe it, it it's very krung bin very krung bin some <laughs> yeah that's why people on the internet like there's reddit threads about this like nah this is mark spear they they said you know right mark spear from krung bin yeah doing something um but it's not there's photos of him there's, he has music videos arc de soleil out there i think mm -hmm. you know yeah um um and I'm going to take a guess that Daniel Gunnison, Gunnison is probably like his parents' last name, maybe, because I might drop in the, 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 the nuggets already, but he, drop he, them. <laughs> but he uh, is originally from Sri Lanka, but was adopted by a Swedish family when he was six months old. So, right. But for some reason, he, Kadawatha has got to be his like, birth name, maybe. I think I Kadawatha think. is... Yeah. Isn't that, I think it's a city. Oh, yeah. 
in Sri Lanka. Yeah. That's what they said. Yeah. yeah oh, think, so maybe he picked that. I think that's uh, okay, the yeah. little connection there. Okay, got it. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. So, I mean, this guy's really cool though. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like super musically talented yeah. and he does it pretty much all DIY. I think he does yeah. even as far as like the mixing. Yeah. He plays all the instruments. Yeah. He does all the singing. Yeah. All the recording. Yeah. And he has these very different projects that are, you know, um, like a rock one. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Like all the different sounds and genres that he's doing sound really cool and really well done. Yeah. yeah. And it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And he seems like a really cool, chill guy. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, should we play another track? Do yeah, we have any other overview stuff about him? No, I mean, yeah. this one's kind of a wild <laughs> one to talk about. A little bit, yeah. Because um, he's himself is kind of all over the place. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, he's he's just like incredibly talented, and there's music pouring out of him. I think. Yeah. Um, and he just he puts it out in these different projects. Yeah. But it's not super focused on one name or one artist. Yeah. Project, and that makes it kind of interesting. I feel but, like we could almost have called the episode Daniel, like kind of what. That's I was gonna say. <laughs> it, it was like. But because I, when I chose this artist, I didn't yeah. know who it was. Right, that's that's the beauty of this format of this show, right? Yeah, we don't we have no idea until and we research, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, I I don't know who this guy is until yeah. we started doing research this week. <laughs> um, so yeah, bear with us, I guess, because I thought it was just hold true to yeah. Arc de Soleil, right? Since yeah, that was yeah. the inspiration. Yeah. But we are basically talking about Daniel Katawatha. Right. Uh, let's play this other track then. Mm -hmm. Sahara Cowboy.
Sahara Cowboy from Arc de Soleil. I think that's from his first EP that he released under this project, Chameleon Sunday. Mm -hmm. At least the first one that's on Spotify, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's yeah. very good. It's very chill. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to keep comparing to Krongbin, but it's very similar <laughs> to Krongbin. Definitely is. Speaking of which, I have my quote of the day. I decided to go with Mark Spear from Krongbin. Here we go. Uh, he said, don't be afraid of space. You can spend your time either filling up every section of the sonic void or you can embrace that space. Nice. So yeah. Don't be afraid of the space. Don't be afraid of space, man. I've heard it I've heard it said like somebody was describing funk music. Mm -hmm. And it's like the funk is is where your the notes are not being played. Yeah. yeah. You know, Definitely. that's where the funk exists. Yeah. Not when you're playing more notes yeah. all over the place trying to be funky. Yeah. It's the space between that's the funk. Definitely, yeah. You can do, notice that if you come up with a groove, like a bass line, a guitar, and a drum part, and then all of a sudden there's like a new rhythm you hear in it, but mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. It's just like the interplay with those instruments. Yeah. It creates like that. Like a phantom. People call it the groove. Yeah. The phantom, the ghost notes. Yeah. And all that kind of cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Um, so real quick, I was going to mention a couple other band names. Yeah. Because Arc de Sile is who we're talking about. Yeah. Daniel Katawatha. Yeah. And then I think... He has these other band names and his the success through these different pseudonym projects yeah. um, gave him the confidence to release stuff under his own name, Daniel Katawatha. Yeah. So the rock one that I was talking about, then this is a pretty sick album. Mm. It's called Katawatha. Yeah. And that's like, it's like guitar alternative yeah. rock. And it's really cool. A bit like Ever Essence, I thought. Yeah. Like one track I heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Giant's Nest. I think we mentioned that one. Yeah. The other one we hadn't mentioned yet is Llama House. Okay, yeah. yeah. And if I remember correctly, I think this one is very like movie score type. Oh. Like it's gotcha. very chill, yeah. atmospheric. Yeah, yeah. A little bit different. So this guy's really like truly all over the place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with that, let's, let's, let's go back. Yeah, let's we're go going back. To, we're going to Sri Lanka. Well, yeah, we don't know what year. We could take a stab, a guess maybe. I want to say, I feel like he's maybe early 30s. Mm -hmm. I would, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mid now. 31. 31. Yeah. Just guessing though, because we don't have that information. Because <laughs> he's super uh, mysterious under the radar. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was adopted, like I said, yeah, by, at six months old yeah. from a family in Sweden. So he grew up in Sweden, he said in a small town, right? 10,000 people or something like that. Exactly. Um, or he said music wasn't really part of the culture or the, the social scene there or something like that. Um, yeah, his family wasn't very musical either. Yeah. He didn't have a, a strong musical yeah. background. Although I did read somewhere about his dad played guitar and he used, his dad used to play uh, songs from the Spotniks, which is like an inspiration he cites. Okay, no, I think I do remember yeah. saying that. Yeah. I I think it's in the bio, maybe the official bio he has on Spotify. He says something about that. Um, I just remember he also said that his, I, I mean, that's why I was saying it, because he said that he didn't have a strong musical background, but I think yeah. that was the main inspiration. Yeah. And his dad was the one who got him the, his first guitar. When he was six years old, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so that, I don't know if we said that either. That's his yeah. main instrument. Yeah. Um, even though he plays all these other instruments and stuff, that's the kind of one that he started with. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of been the one tried and true yeah. main melodic force yeah. where how he creates. Yeah. And he is a singer as well, which is crazy. He sings on these other projects, but not on this project. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his voice is probably, I don't know, some of the stuff I heard from Giant's Nest is a, it's a little poppy. He has a, like a kind of a, or, or like a chill voice kind of thing, mm -hmm. maybe. Like almost pop melodics, but but like understated vocals, I think. For yeah. A bit. Like, yeah. I, did, uh, I had a note that said Stockholm. I think maybe he lived in uh, Stockholm. Yeah, that's the main that's capital city, I'm going to venture to say yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, so he's yeah. living on some kind of outskirts. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know. Don't know much about Sweden, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, neither do I. Yeah, Let us yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. how it is over there. I think yeah. it's going pretty good for them. But it was top country in the world isn't it Cons consistently to live in yeah like the yeah. social everything healthcare and quality of life yeah quality of life is high high in sweden yeah 
So, um, what else? What else? Where are we at? Early um, life. That's about, that's all I have. That's, that's all I that's have too. All the information that's out there about this early life. Yeah, there's some interviews and stuff, yeah. you know, and pretty sparsely laid out there on the internet, but it, yeah. it kind of cuts off from, he tells that story about his early life and then it kind of cuts to yeah. when he's, his process of making music. Which I think his first stuff is that rock project, the band. Kadawata, because uh, I found on YouTube there's like, uh, like almost like vlog clips from like 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. There's one I saw of him. At first, I didn't think it was him because he seemed obviously a, young, a lot younger, like different look, different haircut, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, this one video I saw of him is like, oh, I can't record vocals in my apartment because of the neighbors. So mm -hmm. I might give you a tour of where I'm going to build my vocal booth. And he's in some room that has like a big chest freezer and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> He's being kind of sarcastic in the video, like, you know, <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. This is where I'm going to, like, it's going to be great. You great. Know? <laughs> Top notch. Um, and I think that was, yeah, I don't know. It, I think I saw at least one band photo, so I think he did have other musicians in this band. I think that's but, right. Um, and maybe that's, like, because that's not his real last name. I, I feel like that's a good guess because we said it was a capital C mm -hmm. of Sri Lanka. So, like, it, called the band that but then he called himself daniel kadawato as well like it's part of that kind of project i think yeah um and there's some music videos of that yeah it's all crazy it's like yeah I'll, ever essence is like the band I, I go to for that sort of stuff it's like almost anime emo rock pop mm -hmm. a little bit you think yeah um, it, yeah, yeah it's like emo rock yeah alternative yeah and i think like what led him into that because he said well, this isn't a straight comparison either, but 90s grunge music, like he mm -hmm. listened to the Nirvanas and the Pearl Jam and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, I was going to mention yeah. some more of the influences too. Yeah. So I'll just go off that. Um, Cult of Luna, mm -hmm. Coldplay, yeah. The National, yeah. Muse, yeah, Deftones, a yeah. uh, band called Mew, mm -hmm. band called Mute Math, mm -hmm. which is cool. I think I saw Mute Math in Seattle one time. And they're pretty cool. Radiohead. Yeah. Um, Sigur, Sigur Ross. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that, I never pronounced that correctly, but we know who we're talking about here. Yeah. They're like Sigur. Icelandic. Is that the one that's? Yeah. Iceland, right? I think. Yeah. 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 So, and then he also has some other genre influences like Hans Zimmer right. and John Williams, yeah, yeah. who obviously are huge movie score. Yeah. Cinematic musical types i think he was asked in one interview who who would like to spend time in the studio with who would like to party with and mm -hmm. some other question i forgot his party question is he'd like to party with mozart apparently mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i think he said because he because you can't imagine what kind of partier is he right yeah. like what what are you guys going to do yeah like how what, how is that guy going to act mm. like you can i think you mentioned you can imagine how it would be to party with drake Right. Like you can kind of see how that might go. Right. That yeah. kind of style. Because you, well, because you see, like, you have an image of him now. Because mm -hmm. we could, see, you could see what he presents. Yeah. Whereas Mozart, we just have his old, old drawings or paintings of yeah. what he looked like and stories of how he performed yeah. classical music back in the day, I think, you know? Yeah. <laughs> little but, rooms. Isn't like rich people in little rooms giving recitals? That was kind of how it was done or something. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what's weird is yeah. they were doing these things and the music sounds how it sounds. Yeah. But they were still like crazy young people yeah. who I'm sure like to have a good time yeah. and let loose. So Drink some absinthe, you know. <laughs> Hallucinate a little bit. Do some, you take your snuff box around with you wherever you're going. Yeah. I don't know what that is. You didn't know about this? A what? Snuff box. Snuff box. Cocaine. I actually went to the Asian Art, oh. art Museum years ago. And they had a collection of like old snuff boxes. So like from the Victorian period. Like a little drug box? Yeah, it was, it's just like it looks like a little Altoids tin, really small. And they, they'd, but they're all like designed and stuff. And nice. that was where they kept their cocaine back in. You know, Sweet. The uh, Victorian years when it was legal, you know, so. And before then probably as well. Yeah. Rife with drugs and absinthe. Right. Back in those Mozart days. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he had to be on something to, to exactly. create all these crazy right. yeah. sounds. 
Um, so what else do you want to talk about? Um, so yeah, tough one. Uh, I have like found some cool stuff about his creative process and his like take on the reason why he's doing these different genres. But also there's the epi epidemic sound thing. Should we, should we talk about that like now? Or? Sure. Yeah. So what is epidemic sound, Jesse? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a company. It's a website. Uh, they offer like music libraries for mm -hmm. creators. Um, so for like YouTube creators, production companies, ad companies, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes you want to use music in something and you have to pay like through the ear hole for something like Coldplay or something like that or mm -hmm. Crumbin. And then so the other cheaper alternative is to go to a sound library. So Epidemic Sound is basically like a sound library. But um, I think any artist can submit music to them. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be approved by them. Like you, ha you could submit as an artist and they review it. And if they like it, they'll like, you know, get in contact with you and put your music in their library. And it's more of like an actual relationship with the artist mm -hmm. versus just like uploading stuff, you know. Um, so I've heard about them a lot. A lot of YouTubers say, you know, go to Epidemic Sound for 10% off with this coupon. There's my sponsor for this video and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm not super familiar. That's yeah. interesting. But I mean, yeah. And so like a few, and so he, he, at some point he submitted his music there. Um, I'm not sure which project came first kind of thing. But, um, but for Arc de Soleil, like a lot of people in the Reddit channels that are trying to figure out who this guy is discovered Arc de Soleil's music on like surf YouTube videos. One guy said he was like re, uh, searching around for camera reviews and this track was on there and, and they liked it. And they're like, who is this? Same as you, she zammed it or something like that and yeah. came across him. So it's like, so it's an interesting thing because Epidemic Sound, they state this, they say that the average that their musicians make is $40,000 a year. And he said their top earners make $200,000 a year as artists. For what? For like, uh, you, as an artist, you sign up to Epidemic Sounds, you do a non-exclusive license for them. With, but with, I guess as, tracks. as far as like how many songs, like you upload one song, you get $40,000, I doubt it. No, it's like, like spread out over your library of tracks kind of thing. And, uh, and so they, you know, they work to license the music to the creators. And mm -hmm. so they, if you go on their site, they have $10 a month, like they have subscription plans for creators kind of thing. So one part of this they do as well is they said they have a $2 million bonus at the end of the year and they distribute that to every artist that's on Epidemic Sound based on the amount of like plays that they've got sort of thing. So if you've got 10 plays and I only got one, you get more of a share mm -hmm. of that kitty kind of thing. So it sounds like, on the surface to me, it sounds really interesting from a musician's point of view, like to sign up to this library. It's non-exclusive, so you can still put your stuff out elsewhere, but you can license tracks through them, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, they're supposedly gonna work to like promote your music and get it used, which is interesting for me. So it makes me think about Daniel Kadawada and all of his different genres. This isn't like a, I, me being, what's the word? Uh, what's the word? Let's try it. Uh, there's a certain word I'm looking hmm. for. Um, judgmental or whatever, or something like that, or dubious, whatever. Um, but I'm like, did he make, does he make all of these different genres on purpose to cater for the sound library? Okay, so is that the, yeah. that's what we're kind of talking I'm about? I'm a little bit thinking, like, did he spin up this Arc de Soleil Skeptical? project? Skeptical, yeah. Uh, to, for people that want to use Crumbin, but it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And so he's capitalizing on that yeah. and copying that sound in order to license it. I'm not saying that's what it. he's doing, but. <laughs> <laughs> Accusatory. But back in the day, they have done this pretty heavily, like going back to like the 60s and 70s and all that. You know, they would, these sound libraries would create like funk tracks, you know, and stuff like that, you know, or. Even like recently, there, I think there's, you know, stuff that if they can't license cut a Coldplay song, they'll get a composer to like do the same sort of track, but change the key 
Right. So it's like vaguely sounds like Coldplay, but it's like not them, you know. So they do that. For sure. But, I think that is definitely a thing that happens yeah, yeah, yeah. in order to, you know, kind of create a loophole yeah. to get music that they, with the similar vibe that they want. But on the flip side, I think, you know, I feel like Daniel is doing these dramas for the library to make money. It's just total my opinion here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's not just creating whatever for the money. I think he's trying to find his authenticity in creating it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, like for this group, example, Og de Soleil, he, he mentions the shadows and the spot necks as being inspirations in the bio um, and not Krongbun, you know. Yeah, right. And if you listen to those groups, I don't know if you've ever heard of the shadows, but they were like a classic all guitar instrumental band from the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, I listened to some of the spot necks. I hadn't heard of them and, the, and they're the same. Uh, it's all this kind of like surfy, like guitar, yeah, like retro sounding like tracks kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. So yeah, he's finding inspiration from that to create this music, you know. Yeah, at like, least based on what he says, he yeah. says that, you know, he's inspired by a lot of stuff. And that's kind of one of the first ways of, of communicating that he discovered, yeah. like yeah, yeah. being able to communicate through guitar and it's he says it's like a language that he you know knows yeah and it came really easy to him yeah and so you know to your point maybe that maybe he's just saying that yeah to to hide the fact that he's he's just capitalizing on this well, way of making music oh well, i have some direct evidence which also makes me feel like because oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said about the giant's nest project he said the only reason that project came about is because Epidemic Sound specifically asked him if he could make like lounge house music. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, and yeah. like they, that's what they wanted. Yeah. And he was like, let me try to do that. Yeah. And he did and it was successful and then it became one of his main projects. Yeah. And then he, but he found he enjoyed it kind of thing yeah. as well, you know. So I think, yeah. I think it's a mix between the two. Yeah, yeah. I think because yeah. there's no harm no. in like, you know, finding your path as a musician, how can I make money? How can right. I be successful? Yeah. And one of the ways to do it is by getting, you know, sync licensing, licensing this, yeah. keep being able to find pathways to get your music onto different media yeah. platforms and, and into different, you know, mediums like video. Yeah. And if you're being professional about it, you have to do that. It's, it's a really key component component to making money as a musician these days right it's basically licensing or commissioned compositions or uh going on tour right you know like because and then below that is like royalties from like radio play below that right at the very bottom is like money from streaming and yeah album sales <laughs> so like the two top earners are licensing and going on tour pretty much like, mm -hmm. you know so I think either way, yeah. I mean, the, I guess the main point that I, which is like why I think it's cool to talk about Daniel on this podcast is because either way, it's, it's impressive what he's able to do yeah, yeah. as a producer, For sure, yeah. you know, like these yeah. Krongbin vibes and he's playing all the instruments yeah. and then he does these rock vibes with vocals and it's, it's pretty drastically different, yeah. but also both well done yeah. to, to each their own. Yeah, yeah. And like that's just impressive in itself as a producer, even for, for regardless of what reason you're doing it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so that's impressive to me. Yeah, it is interesting to. I I would like to you know talk to him and see like what yeah behind the scenes conversation yeah and and see how much he's focused on just doing this as a industry yeah thing a way to make money yeah. um, you know specifically. Yeah. Or if he's, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like, like he's obviously artistic either way. Yeah. And he, it's just like, there's two separate clauses that we're talking about. He definitely presents as an artist, you know? Um, I feel like because a lot of people heard about him through the epidemic sound licensing, some people on the Reddit, well, there's a mixture. Like people on the Reddit threads are like, 
oh, it's just background music. They're copying Crumbin for money kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you know? And then someone else is like, you think so? Because like, have you listened to this EP? Like, it's pretty crazy. Someone else is like, I did a mushroom trip to this and it was fantastic. <laughs> He's definitely got the vibes. You know, people like the music. I think we like the music, you know. I mean, it's just like, yeah, it holds yeah. up whether he's yeah, yeah. whether he's copying them or not. It's yeah. it's like, yeah. but I think it's because the only reason I could sort of say this about the library thing, it's interesting because he doesn't he presents himself as an artist, but he doesn't like he doesn't create like an Instagram account for every one of these projects. Like he mm -hmm. has white one Instagram, that's his name, and I saw it, and he posts a mixture like. Uh, he'll post like a, a video for a new Giant's Nest track. And then he's like, I've got a new album coming. They, they have a live album coming out, I think, with Arc de Soleil, which they recorded outside Nashville or something, mm -hmm. um, which is like whole live versions of these songs, like, uh, like I think recorded in one take with the band kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Crumbin but, style. Yeah. But I think he's able to make a living and not have to do all the stupid TikTok bullshit, which I appreciate like, i feel like these days we're, we all have to be like on every social platform doing all this stuff to promote our music but do you have to really like if you well, if you can make a living out of it you know through, yeah you know, and i feel yeah. like that's he's kind of skirting around that whole culture yeah. Yeah, yeah and instead of being like let me amass you know a big population of people who will yeah give me these streams of income through yeah. my merchandise through coming to my shows yeah. and supporting me as this one artist yeah. under this one name like i'm not i'm not going to do any of that social media stuff and i'm just going to make different bands yeah. and license it and get these different streams of income yeah. you know from here and from here and from here and from here diversifying and, your income yeah they they always talk about that just as one artist diversifying where that income comes from but if you're doing different projects even better, right? <laughs> I mean, whatever you're yeah. investing in, it's yeah. always good to diversify. So I think maybe that is what he's doing. Yeah. I, I, I totally am on the same page. Yeah. I'm not like arguing about it at all. Yeah. I just think it's, it's what we're seeing is a different way of, you know, being a successful musician. Yeah. Rather than just be making a name for yourself and, you know, quote unquote, yeah. making it we, in the industry. And it's still, even with this epidemic sound thing, they still, we, they should sponsor us. Fucking said this name way too many <laughs> times, uh, but it, it does come down to the quality of the tunes, right? You know, they're rewarding people in their library who whose music gets used a lot. You know, mm -hmm. and it's creators, people out there that like it, and put it on. You know, and then that in turn has people like us shazamming it and going on Spotify and streaming it even more. Which I think, which is why he has pretty crazy streams, despite having like no PR. Barely any info about Hammer out there, but people are streaming the music. Yeah. You know, which is great. Yeah. So, I mean, the yeah. business model yeah. is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and, you know, it's interesting. And, and it just, it, yeah, it comes down to the quality of the tunes at the end of the day. You know? yeah. yeah. The the tunes have integrity. Yeah. yeah. Is, is one of the main things. And I think he does, he, he has a lot of artistry that goes into these projects yeah. one way or another, even if it's just like a cold... I'm going to make a, this type of band so I can get these, these kind of streams yeah. from this genre for a video or for people who like that. Um, I don't know, man. It's yeah. interesting. It's cool. Yeah. Another track. Let's play another track. Yeah. Uh, Mumbo Sugar. Mm-hmm. 
Mambo Sugar from Arc de Soleil from another EP 2020 Libertalia Libertalia that's nice. a cool name yeah cool artwork as well they, he has on all of these releases that mm -hmm. one's like this TV, old TV with a sea beach just the ocean or something like yeah. that yeah uh, nice. yeah nice and it is yeah it's pretty pretty beachy beachy yeah yeah, I just, yeah. I didn't, it's so weird how it sounds so much like Krong Bingo. <laughs> like, come on. It's full circle, everyone. Take, check out episode one of Krong Bin, of Rooster Grooves. Yeah, that Krong was Bin. that one. Damn. That was uh, hundreds of episodes ago. Like three years, years ago. A year, three years ago. And we're still not making any money from this podcast. Yeah. Send us some bag of cash to P.O. Box Rooster Grooves. Nobody ever sends yeah. us bags of cash. No. So that's all right. Because we yeah. just like to be here, you know, talking about stuff and, and learning about it. Exactly. And spending time together. Yes. When you are all invited along the journey. Learning about music. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, that's, this is basically all I have on Daniel Katawatha on Arc de Soleil. So the only other things I, I came up, found is, uh, we talk about him doing different genres for all of his different projects. He said he likes to do that because he it challenges him musically um mm -hmm. to like do a genre that he knows nothing about he has to like acquire new skills so i feel like for this project like he's really dove dive deep into like mastering that kind of guitar style mm -hmm. which is crazy and he's really good at it yeah which is why people think he sounds he's mark spear or something you know? yeah but he's not he's out there and there's photos of him with a guitar and playing a guitar in a video and not this stuff but other stuff mm -hmm. so um and he also talk, talks about storytelling like he he th likes to think about his music as kind of like telling a story to scenes that he's experienced in real life like you say he'll just walk down the street and see something happen and he'll think about the music that would fit that kind of thing um mm -hmm. so when he goes to write he sort of try he said sometimes he writes notes about how that made him feel or something like that. And then that will like trigger um, the inspiration kind of thing. Right. And then kind of recreate that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Through the music in the studio. Yeah. And something else he said is uh, he uh, like he doesn't overthink anything. He says he just he just creates. He said he just goes to the studio and just starts making music. That's it. And he said it takes him about 10 minutes to get into the flow state. Mm -hmm. which is crazy i mean that's great like i have it hit and miss sometimes i'll start a track and i'm like oh this is sounding crap i'm not in the flow state at all like but maybe you have to do that that's part of getting into the flow state right you work on this idea and you like scratch it start something new and then you're like oh yeah okay i mean yeah, yeah. one of the i mean it's just like anything else training our bodies yeah, yeah. the more we get into the flow state the easier it is to achieve the flow state yeah, yeah and you know our minds can lock in on something specific yeah so i think you know obviously he's working very hard over the past you know 10 years or whatever yeah. on on all these projects and he's he's gotten good at you know diving deep into these vibes yeah and i think that's one of the things just that consistent work ethic yeah. um and and putting in the work to learn new genres yeah. And to try something new and to really dive deep into the vibe, it just, you know, yeah. I don't know. The more you do it, the better you're going to be at it, I think. The, yeah, yeah. Just with anything else, the consistency is key. Yeah. And just making it happen, just working, for, you know, going to work. Lots of people have said this. Flying Lotus said this as well, I think. Like, he'll, he'll always work no matter what, even if he's not feeling it, you know. Mm -hmm. He said if... If he's not into making a track, he'll just like make a synth patch or something. Or he'll, he'll gather samples, you know, that type of thing. So yeah, really important note. Another note for me to take away from all of this is just do it. Like <laughs> Exactly, I'm down yeah. with that. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it's a get, little bit of work. Always get to work, always do it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, cool stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's Arc de Soleil. It's mm -hmm. pretty good stuff. Yeah. But I'd recommend checking out Daniel Katawatha yeah, yeah. in general and check out the other projects. Yeah. Check out, uh, what is it? Giant's Nest. Daniel Cade. Yeah. Um, um, what was the other one? Llama. 
Yeah, that's, Llama that House. one sounds really interesting to me because mm-hmm. you said it's like comp- film compositions or something yeah. like that. Yeah, Cla- more classical. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, he's really all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he said his influence is from all over the place as well. So, like, all credit to him. Like, he's just very much into everything, M- music in general. Yeah. And seeing how he can sharpen his skills and get into the vibe in different genres kind mm-hmm. of thing. I don't know anyone else is doing that really to my knowledge like you know tom york has different projects but you can always hear his sort of style in yeah it, i think there's the new project smile which is actually mm-hmm. him and johnny greenwood which is crazy the smile the smile sorry the smile <laughs> crazy i didn't like they're it's like well, it's not half of radiohead but there's two major people from Radiohead. yeah um but it's you know sim singing and stuff like that and his and the, both of their guitar work. It's totally not like Radiohead though, which is interesting. So totally. Yeah, three piece, yeah. drums, bass, guitar, yeah, yeah. and vocals. Yeah. So yeah. like stripped down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, That's it's good good yeah, stuff yeah. though. Yeah. That's cool music, we can talk about that one day. Definitely. I like that. Epic. Tom York's always killing it always, you know, as always. Yeah, definitely. So, cool man. Check out Arc de Soleil. It's good stuff. Yeah. Like you said, it's impressive. Arch um, of the Sun. Is that what it means? No, I don't know. I don't know. Try, try I mean, to do that, a translation. That makes... With no knowledge That makes language. sense. Yeah. Let Soleil us know what you think his name means. Yeah. Um, but let's bounce out of here, guys. If you want to hang it out, hang out with us on Insta. It's at Roots to Grooves. Twitter, at Roots to Grooves, even though I think Twitter's getting canceled. Mm. Uh, Threads. We haven't joined that Oh, yet. yeah. It's growing fast. Yeah, yeah. YouTube at Roots to Grooves, TikTok at Signal Radio, and hit us up at the Gmail um, so Epidemic Sounds can sponsor yeah. us. Yeah. That's where you'd want to hit us up. Roots to Grooves at SignalRadio.com, S I G N L Radio.com.
Roots to Grooves is a production of Signal Radio. For more music and independent culture, visit signalradio.com. That's S-I-G-N-L radio.com.